So let me uh, uh, begin to wrap up, and I'll do so by drawing some connections between the current monetary policy debate that uh, you'll hear about and read about and the goal-oriented approach to monetary policy that I've described in this speech. So the Federal Open Market Committee is currently buying $85 billion of long-term assets per month. And recently, there's been this ongoing public conversation about the possibility that the committee might reduce its current flow of long-term asset purchases uh, over the next year. Now, the FOMC's asset purchases push down longer-term interest rates. That encourages consumers to spend and businesses to invest. So reducing the flow of purchases in the near term would be a drag on the already slow rate of progress toward the committee's goals. It would uh, slow the rate of progress to back towards 2% inflation and slow the rate of progress of employment back to maximum employment. So from the perspective of a goal-oriented approach, the timing of this conversation seems puzzling. I find that the FOMC statement, uh, which it released after its recent meeting, provides a useful way to understand this otherwise puzzling conversation. Long-term asset purchases are uh, still a relatively novel tool, and central banks continue to learn about their costs and their benefits. For this reason, the FOMC statement emphasizes that its decisions about asset purchases are based not only on the committee's out economic outlook, but also on its assessment of the cost and efficacy of its unconventional policy tool. The requisite calculus is necessarily a delicate one. Unfortunately, the recent public conversation about reducing the flow of asset purchases typically places little or no emphasis on these costs and efficacy considerations. As a result, the dialogue risks creating the perception that the committee is not following a goal-oriented approach to monetary policy. Such a perception can create doubts and uncertainty about the criteria that are underlying committee decision-making. And we can see the imprint of these doubts and uncertainty in the heightened level of bond market volatility over the past few months. I believe the committee could reduce this volatility by greatly enhancing its communication on the role of cost and efficacy considerations in its deliberations about the evolution of asset purchases. The committee could also promote a goal-oriented approach to monetary policy by making other changes to its communication. The committee has said little about how it plans to adjust the Fed funds rate, the short-term interbank lending rate, once the unemployment rate falls below 6.5%. So the, the committee has said that it intends to keep the, uh, the Fed funds rate at its current extraordinarily low level, which is essentially close to zero, uh, at least until the unemployment rate falls uh, to 6.5%, but hasn't said what it's going to do uh, after the unemployment rate falls below 6.5%. In previous speeches, I've recommended that the FOMC announce its intention to keep the Fed funds rate extraordinarily low at least until the unemployment rate falls below 5.5%. Not 6.5, but 5.5 percent. As long as the one to, to one to two year ahead outlook for the inflation rate stays below two and a half percent. Now, a recent working paper by senior board of governors staff suggested this policy stance could indeed have material benefits in terms of the evolution of prices and employment. Beyond these changes in communication, the committee could also take concrete policy steps to demonstrate commitment to a goal-oriented goal approach to policy. In its most recent statement, the committee says that it expects the unemployment rate to decline gradually and the inflation rate to be below 2% over the medium term. Under a goal-oriented approach, the committee responded to this, monetary, this weak outlook by providing more monetary stimulus. One way it could do that is by lowering the interest rate being paid to banks on their excess reserves. My speech has been called a time of testing. Five years ago, 2008, the nation and the world spiraled into a financial crisis. It was obvious that economic policymakers faced a time of testing. Thanks in large part to Chairman Bernanke's strong and imaginative leadership, the Federal Reserve System was able to pass that challenging test. The system's actions in the fall of 2008 and the first half of 2009 were critical in eliminating what was the non-trivial risk of a second Great Depression with unemployment rates closer to 25% than to 10%. My message today is that this is another time of testing. 
Over six years after the national unemployment rate first began its ascent, the labor market remains disturbingly weak. The good news is that with low inflation, the FOMC has considerable monetary policy capacity at its disposal with which, with which to address this problem. The FOMC's test today is to figure out how best to deploy that capacity. The answer lies in taking two steps. The first step is to communicate that our goal is to accomplish a fast return to maximum employment while keeping inflation close to, although possibly temporarily above, the target of 2%. The second step is to do whatever it takes on an ongoing basis to achieve that goal. A goal-oriented approach to monetary policy greatly reduced inflation in the early 1980s. Adopting such an approach in our own time would improve labor market outcomes. Thank you very much for listening. I look forward to taking your questions.